My wife, who despised exercising, fell in love with yoga. She proudly claimed, Aren't you happy that I'm doing yoga? Of course. I supported my wife's interests. Until one day, I went to pick her up after class by chance, and saw her and the male yoga instructor doing yoga completely naked. Dot dot. Standing outside the training room, my heart sank. I never expected my wife's yoga instructor to be a man. When she initially wanted to practice yoga, I only objected symbolically. Considering she usually avoid any form of exercise, she convinced me by saying yoga would benefit our sex life and that it was to please me. So I reluctantly agreed, but I had imagined a female instructor. Seeing my wife engaging in intimate movements with another man in the training room made my blood boil. Just as I was about to burst in and stop them, my wife slipped and fell into the male instructor's arms. She lightly punched his chest full of muscles. You did that on purpose. The instructor smirked. My wife stood up and asked the instructor, Tell me, how many women have you used this trick on? Hearing this, I was stunned. My heart went cold. She wasn't even angry, and she was flirting with the instructor. I felt a rush of betrayal. My fists clenched tightly. The instructor held my wife in his arms. Emi, this is my job. I need to make a living. Emi pouted angrily. Dirty thing. Don't think you can come in without protection next time. At this moment, words couldn't describe my feelings. I looked around for something to use. Wanting to beat these to scumbags. But then I thought better of it. Going in now would only result in a big fight. Ending with me brawling with that man and eventually getting a divorce. Wouldn't that be too easy for them? I forced down my anger and called Emi. Wife, are you almost done with your class? Almost. By the way, my distant cousin is in town, and I want to treat him to dinner tonight. While talking, Emi mischievously glanced at the instructor. The instructor's expression changed dramatically. He pointed at himself, seemingly asking if she meant him. Emi nodded affirmatively, then made a gesture and continued. Honey, can you prepare a few extra dishes tonight? And wine. And wine. The instructor mouthed urgently. Emi then instructed me. By two bottles of good wine. I sneered. These scumbags really knew how to seek thrills. They wanted to provoke me in my own home. Fine. I immediately agreed. Leaving the gym. I went straight to the supermarket to buy wine. Two bottles of good wine. I diluted one bottle with 80% water. Greatly reducing its alcohol content. The other bottle I mixed with half a bottle of medical alcohol. Prepared especially for her dear instructor. So you love drinking, how? Let's see if you can survive this. After preparing the wine, I bought a few pre-made dishes. Think you deserve my cooking. Emi, you'll never have that chance again in your life. Watch how I play you both. Around 6.30 p.m., my wife returned with her so-called distant cousin. This distant cousin sure knew how to play the part. Bringing a bag of cheap apples. Honey, let me introduce you. This is my cousin. Ru, oh, cousin, you didn't need to bring anything. Times must be tough for you. Emi and the male instructor Ru were stunned by my words. They seemed to be wondering what hardship I was talking about. Can't you see my designer clothes? Come on, don't just stand there. Have a seat. I invited Ru to the couch and poured him a glass of cold water. Ru, it's almost Kingming Festival. Why did you suddenly come to Sidia? Ru was clearly caught off guard by my question and glanced at Emi. Emi quickly smoothed things over. What does traveling have to do with holidays? Honey, can you ask something more relevant? You don't get it. Cousin's parents have passed away. And Kingming Festival is for visiting grades. Theft. Ru nearly spat out the water he had just drunk. What's wrong? Ru, did I say something wrong? He put on a pained expression and nodded stiffly. Yes. I've already visited their graves in advance. And what about your sister's rape case? Has that been resolved? Ru slowly lifted his head, looking bewildered. Emi immediately interrupted. Honey, you must be mistaken. I said, didn't you tell me about this? Emi paused. I was talking about a different cousin. Oh, I nodded awkwardly. Ru, it seems Emi miscommunicated. Ryu's face had darkened, but he forced a smile and said it was fine. Then he asked if dinner was ready. He said he had never met me before and wanted to have a good drink tonight. 
I quickly got to work and took them to the kitchen. Since I usually focused on healthy eating, I had never bought pre-made dishes before. Today's sudden feast surprised Timmy. Honey, you did a great job. It's not every day cousin comes by, so I couldn't slack off. Come, sit down. Cousin, make yourself comfortable. Ru sat opposite us, and I poured him a glass of the strong wine. Seeing this, Emi hurried to fill my glass as well. I smiled and said, one bottle per person. I opened the pre-prepared bottle of liquor and poured myself a glass. The first drink always has a story. I stood up with my glass and opened my phone's camera. Come on, honey, let's take a photo with Cousin Ru. We can get it printed and framed later. Emi and Ru laughed after hearing this. I could understand the deeper meaning in their smiles. Who else would willingly take a photo with the man who was cheating with his wife? Probably just me. Honey, this is a video, not a photo. I know it's a video. We'll record first. Then we can capture the best moments as screenshots later. It saves us from taking multiple photos and interrupting our drinking. They both agreed it made sense and cooperated enthusiastically. The three of us squeezed into the frame. I loudly asked, Cousin Ru, aren't you handsome? Handsome. They both replied enthusiastically. They probably thought it was just like saying cheese for the camera. It's far more than that. When I catch them in the act, that cousin will mean much more than just infidelity. How could it be the same? How? Huh? Once everything was set, it was time to start drinking. For me, the wine went down like cold water. Ru, on the other hand, took a small sit and immediately shuddered violently. This wine. Ru looked puzzled. It's fine. I said, I spent over a thousand per bottle on it. Ru was reassured by the price. It's good. Just has a bit of a hospital taste. After a few rounds, Ru hadn't even finished half a bottle, but was already slurring his words and swaying in his seat. I played along, pretending to be tipsy as well. At this point, Emi suddenly said, Honey, there's something I need to tell you. Go ahead, dear. Speak your mind. Cousin is actually in some trouble and came to us for help. Isn't that right, cousin? Emi looked at Ru, who immediately put on a poor show of acting. That's right. Things have been tough lately. I had nowhere else to go and thought of why cousin Emi. He even teared up. Whether he got too into character or not. So Emi was suggesting I give money to support this gigolo. Honey, my cousin has been really good to me. He even saved my life when we were kids. When we were seven, we played by the riverbank, and I almost drowned after slipping in. Cousin Ru jumped in without hesitation to save me. Dot dot. Well, no problem. I'll help. Tomorrow, I'll find Cousin Ru a job. I cut Emi off quickly because her acting was so poor that I feared she might slip up. Unexpectedly, as soon as they heard about the job, they both started explaining urgently, especially Emi, who was the most anxious. Honey, you misunderstood. Cousin actually wants to borrow some money to get back on his feet. Look at his clothes. All branded. He used to be a successful businessman. Just recently fell on hard times. Oh. I see. How much does Cousin want to borrow? Emi gave Ru a nudge. Ru gritted his teeth and said. 300,000. Emi looked disappointed. Did she think it wasn't enough? This heartless person. Doesn't she know how hard I work every day to earn money? Things are a bit better now, with around 10,000 a month coming in. But before, I was really risking my life. Back when we first got married, her expenses were huge. To satisfy her need to keep up with others, I secretly worked as a water ghost for three months. This involved diving at construction sites to retrieve drill bits, earning 10,000 if I surfaced alive, and 100,000 for my family if I didn't. Several times I almost die. Yet, even then, I named Emi as the beneficiary on my insurance policy. And this is how she repays me. Honey, can you do it? Emi eagerly asked me. I pretended to be drunk and boasted. 300,000 to start over. I'll invest a million. They were both stunned and then delighted. Emi was particularly surprised. Not expecting I had that much money. But then I dashed their excitement with cold water. Saying. The only issue is I don't have that much liquid cash right now. Here's what we'll do. I have a friend who gives out loans at very low interest. For people like us, 
It's no problem to loan out 500,000 each. I'll take a 500,000 loan in my name. And honey, you can take another 500,000. That should be enough. As soon as they heard loan, their expression soured. To be precise, they were disappointed. Remuttered. Loans aren't safe. Are they? There's nothing unsafe about it. That guy and I grew up together. Cousin, I'm not bragging. But even if you can't repay him, he won't come after you. Our friendship is solid. I'll even guarantee the loan for you. Anyone who's ever taken a loan knows that if the borrower can't repay, the guarantor takes on all the pressure. Ru quickly agreed. Emmy's mouth slowly curled into a smile. I kept smiling as well. The fish had bitten. After we had settled the important matters, Ru began to frequently toast me. The guy could hold his liquor and only passed out after finishing the bottle. I helped him to the guest room to rest and, while cleaning up the dishes, Emi told me she felt dizzy and wanted to rest too. I let her go, knowing she would feel dizzy because I had slipped some sleeping pills into her drink. Once I was sure they were both asleep, I sneaked Emmy's phone out. I found her chat history with Rue. The messages were explicit. These two had started their affair from the first day they exchanged money and even went to a hotel that night. Emi frequently sent Rue provocative photos, and he reciprocated with images of his ABS and thighs. There were also numerous hotel room numbers provided by Emi. They had hooked up in hotels at least 10 times in a month. She wasn't practicing yoga to please me. It was always Rue who was getting satisfied. Grinding my teeth. I took screenshots of all the chat records. Then I stormed into Emmy's room and slapped her five times hard. She gradually opened her eyes. What's wrong, honey? Nothing. Just mosquitoes. She fell back into a deep sleet. I repeated the process in Ryu's room. Punching him as well. Even after beating them. I didn't feel satisfied. Hitting them while they were half asleep didn't feel fulfilling enough. As I thought it over. An idea struck me. I dragged Rue into our bedroom. After closing the door, I messed up the living room and then lay down on the couch. Early the next morning, I gathered my strength, swung my arm wide, and rained slaps on both their faces until they woke up. This time they really woke up. Emi was furious. Andrew was just as angry. They nearly jumped out of bed to fight me. I pointed at Rue and cursed it. You bastard. I was just about to invest a million in you, and you do this to me. Ru instantly understood. Emi was also shocked. This wasn't some hotel room they had rented. It was my home. Ru wasn't her lover. He was her cousin. In a dramatic turn, to secure my million dollar investment, Emi slapped Ru hard. Feigning innocence, she checked under the blanket. Cousin, how could you do this? Ru looked utterly regretful. I drank too much last night. I don't remember how I got here. Emi, cousin-in-law, please let me explain. I genuinely forgot. Besides, look at my clothes. Clearly, nothing happened. I looked at them, seething with rage. After a long pause, I waved my hand dismissively. Yet, we did drink a lot last night. Even I ended up sleeping on the couch. Forget it. We're family. Emi and Ru were visibly relieved. After breakfast, Ru left quickly. His face swollen from the slaps. After he left, Emi whispered to me, Honey, we shouldn't drink like that again. I reply, Right? Next time something worse might happen. Emi added, So about the money for cousin, we still need to invest. I think your cousin has potential. If he succeeds, we might even get a share. Emi couldn't hide her happiness and immediately took me out to get a loan. I wasn't lying. I did have a childhood friend who worked in loans. I secretly messaged him last night, asking him to refuse a loan request due to insufficient credit. Even as a guarantor, he should find a way to make them sign and then remove my name. Loan officers know how to handle these things. No need to teach them. My friend asked what was going on, and I honestly told him I had been cheated on and wanted to punish the adulterers. He was furious and promised to handle it. When we went for the loan, Ru came along as well. Upon hearing that my credit was insufficient, Emi was puzzled. Honey, you've never taken a loan before. How come your credit is bad? I pretended to be equally perplexed. My friend quickly explained. Technically, 
It's not really about credit. It's because he got into a fight a few years ago and had to be disciplined. So the system flags him. Emi nodded suspiciously, as if trying to recall when I had fought. Haru, standing beside us, said disappointedly. So we can't get the million dollar loan then. A million? That's easy. Just give me both of your IDs to check. They hesitated but eventually handed over their IDs. The so-called system easily approved them. My friend said to them, Each of you can get a limit of one. Five million. How much do you want to borrow? One. Five million? I thought we could only get 500,000. Most people can only get 500,000. But Ken is my buddy, so I can use some channels. Of course. The system has to approve it. If Ken doesn't pass, there's nothing I can do. I almost couldn't help but give my friend a thumbs up. That explanation was brilliant. Why don't we each borrow 500,000? Rue asked Emi. Emi didn't hesitate and nodded. But my friend immediately reminded them. The interest on 500,000 is quite high. It works out that borrowing one, five million, is actually the best deal. Almost like a housing fund loan. But I don't need that much. Rue seemed unsure. After all, who normally has one, five million lying around? Let alone in loans. Unexpectedly, my friend joked with him. Why are you so afraid? With a guarantor. There's nothing to worrying about. Just go for it. Emi, hearing this, also found it reasonable. Clearly planning to screw me over. She nudged Rue. Cousin, haven't you always wanted to open a gym? Since my husband supports you. Just go for it. Honey, if we borrow three million, can you handle it? I pretended to hesitate. Rubbing my forehead. And acted like I was making a big decision. I can handle it. Seeing Cousin dressed in all those brands. He must have a knife for business. Cousin, don't forget to give me a share of the profits when you make money. With the atmosphere built up, Rue was already riding a tiger. Unable to back down, it was clear he was hesitant. Only Emi, blindly in love, believed in her lover's ability without question. She even suggested opening a gym. Gyms often fail, and even selling me equipment later would be tough. But that was perfect for my plan. If they didn't squander the money, my revenge wouldn't be meaningful. Ru finally signed the contract. He and Emi each borrowed one. Five million. They watched me closely as I signed the guarantor section. After the contract was completed, they carefully reviewed it once more before leaving Satisfy. Later, I secretly asked my friend, who told me the pen I signed with had disappearing ink. That's why he kept reminding me not to press too hard ostensibly to avoid tearing the paper and actually to leave no trace. The real show was about to begin. That afternoon, after finishing work, I returned home to find Nimi was not there. I could guess where she went. I urgently needed to capture evidence of their affair the more explicit, the stronger the impact of their incestuous betrayal. It would ensure those two scumbags were utterly disgraced. Last night, I secretly installed a hidden app on Emmy's phone. Not only could it track her location, but it also allowed me to eavesdrop. Finding her was easy. She was at a cafe. Emi was indeed discussing opening a gym with Rue. Emi, I think opening a gym is the best option. We should stick to what we know. Rue, cousin Emi, aren't you worried I'll attract more female members as a gym owner? Ha ha. Emi, I've secured so much money for you. If you mess around again, I'll cut off your manhood. HMPH. Rue. All right, we'll open a gym then. Honestly, babe. Is your husband stupid? He agreed to guarantee a three million loan for a distant cousin he's never met. Emi, you don't get it. Ken always does what I say. If he hadn't agreed, I would have thrown a fit. And he would have caved immediately. Trust me, that guy is a fool. He even worked as a water ghost behind my back once. Rue. Water ghost. Damn. Is he suicidal? Emi. Ha. It was all for me. Ru. Ha ha. I almost feel guilty. Taking advantage of such a good man's wife. Emi. Oh please. You can't even walk past a woman without hitting on her. Feeling guilty. Are you? Ru. Guilt is one thing. But sleeping together is another. Cousin Emi. Tonight I want you. Emi. He <laughs> he. Calling me cousin is quite thrilling. Ru. Have you really been with your cousin before? Emi. 
Get lost. Working hard for Emi. Only for her to call me a simp. This despicable woman. But now. I felt nothing no anger. I had resolved to ruin their lives. To me. They were just prey. Not even human. As I contemplated. Emmy's location marker started moving. The next stop was likely a hotel. I initially planned to catch them in the act myself. But reconsidered. If I caught them now. What if they returned the loan money? Then I remembered a platform on the dark web. It had few members, but was full of scandal enthusiasts. To make money. Some streamers there even specialized in catching cheaters. They helped those who couldn't personally confront their unfaithful partners by gathering evidence at hotels. I immediately logged onto the platform and found a streamer in our city who specialized in this kind of work, known as Tiger Cub. His fees were steep. A thousand bucks. Of course. I wasn't going to pay out of my own pocket. Instead, I called Emi. Honey, has the money arrived? It just came in this afternoon. Your friend works really fast. Be sure to thank him with a meal sometime. No need to wait. I'm with him right now. But your husband hasn't been paid yet and is a bit strapped for cash. Can you transfer me a thousand bucks for spending? Emi, acting like a nouveau rich, immediately transferred a thousand bucks to my account. After the call ended, I confirmed their exact room number through her conversation with the receptionist. In Tiger Cub's live stream, I posted a comment. Got a task? Will you take it? A pair of cousins are in a hotel room. I have the room number. Help me catch them in the act. As soon as I mentioned cousins, the chat exploded with excitement. Even Tiger Cub was impressed. He immediately messaged me privately to confirm the exact address. I just played the role of a viewer. Watching Tiger Cub leave his house, drive to the Target Hotel. I kept reminding him in the chat. Remember, the footage needs to be clear. Tiger Cub assured me not to doubt his professionalism. Then he asked if I had any special requests. I thought for a moment and realized I did. When you get in, say this line. Haru, you scumbag. How could you do this to my sister? I'm going to expose you both. As a yoga instructor. Ru had countless female friends. This line would shift all suspicion away from me, placing the blame squarely on Ru. Soon, Tiger Cub arrived at the hotel, standing outside the target room, just as he was about to enter. I told him to wait. The two inside hadn't started yet. They were probably showering. With the water running. Ah. Uh, damn. I guessed Ron. I immediately told Tiger Cub to proceed. He borrowed a universal key card from the floor's cleaning lady swiped it and kicked the door open charging in what followed on the live stream was an eyesore ruan emi frantically tried to hide thinking it was a police raid diving under the covers ryu's voice trembled who who are you tiger cub ever the professional splashed the leftover milk tea on ryu's face grabbed his clothes and shouted you bastard how could you do this to my sister who's your sister Wait until I expose you to scumbags. Tiger Cub completed his task flawlessly. And I recorded the entire live stream. Ha. Huh. It's that easy. Emi. Who is he? Whose sister did you mess with? Ru. I don't know. I haven't been with any other woman recently. Just you. Emi. Now he's got us on video. If he exposes us, we're done. What if my husband sees it? Ru. Don't ask me, I'm stressed out too. If your husband sees it, he'll divorce you. And then we can be together openly. The listening device, went silent for a while. From a distance, I could tell Emi was tempted. Emi. Then we need to transfer the assets from home quickly. Or I'll be left with nothing. Ru, right? Transfer the assets. And we need to open the gym as soon as possible. Leaving him no room to maneuver. I accidentally sped up their plan. My heart was filled with Joe, just waiting for them to spend the three million quickly. Over the next half month, Emi often left early and returned late. She was secreted every day and avoided meeting my eyes. Guilty as charge. Little did she know that every move she and her lover made was under my control. They rented a large apartment in the city center and were busy with renovations and buying equipment. They even underestimated their budget. After spending all three million, they realized it wasn't enough, leaving a large empty space. 
They thought I was a fool and wanted me to be the guarantor for another loan from my friend. Now I had leverage. I told them frankly that the last one, 5 million each was almost the limit. And I couldn't ask my friend for more favors. Ru was very generous. Offering a $10,000 commission on the spot. These two had clearly lost touch with reality after squandering 3 million. Thinking 10,000 wasn't much, their minds were consumed by their business. With the conversation at this point, I had to help them. As a result, they each took out another 500,000 loan, bringing the total to 400,000. In our county, that's enough to buy at least five houses. So grandiose, truly impressive. I secretly gave them a thumbs up and then accepted their invitation to visit their gin during its soft opening. I must admit, the gin they spent money on was quite nice, but it had very few people, just a handful of women, probably Ryu's mistresses. Emmy's face was priceless when those women arrived, secretly pinching Ryu's waist out of jealousy. Emi could really be called a passionate lover. Ken, brother-in-law, let's have dinner tonight and you can give me some feedback on the gym. Ru invited me. I agreed but strongly suggested bringing those women along to leaven things up. Ru was visibly uncomfortable. Emi asked, Honey, what are you up to? Those are, those are cousins' friends. Do you have any ideas? Of course not. Dear, they helped out during the soft opening. And cousins should show some gratitude. We talked privately. Away from those women. Additionally, Emi kept her distance from Ru in my presence so the women didn't know each other's identities. I was planning a big show. With things said this far and the women willing to go, Ru had no choice but to agree, as I was the main investor with the final say. We chose a star-rated hotel. Sparing no expense, our group of eight ordered a table full of dishes. With the bill likely exceeding 10,000, such an important occasion definitely called for alcohol. With eight people drinking, the liquor flowed freely. As the alcohol kicked in, the atmosphere grew lively. The women glanced at each other like in a palace drama, seemingly with many hidden thoughts, waiting for the right moment to speak. Ru was smart, constantly talking about his gym, never giving any opportunity for emotional topics. Seeing this wouldn't do, I immediately interjected, Honey, which one is your cousin's girlfriend? This statement carried a lot of weight. It not only revealed Emi and Ryu's relationship, but also put Ru on the spot. Sure enough, being called cousins in front of many romantic rivals, a Emi's face looked terrible. How should I know? Cousin, you tell us dot dot. Emi spoke, with emotion. Andrew was like sitting on pins and needles. He smiled awkwardly at me. Brother-in-law, I, I don't have a girlfriend yet. Slap. A woman in her thirties, blushing. Slapped the table and stood up. Ru, what do you mean? You asked me to play along. And now you say you don't have a girlfriend. What do you take me for? What do you mean you're his girlfriend? The woman beside her, who had been holding back, finally stood up. And what's your relationship with Ru? Since the beginning of the dinner, I noticed these two women didn't get along. Always on guard against each other. The fuse finally lit. The other women didn't react as strongly. It was clear they had families and only saw Ru as a plaything. Now, like me, they sat back and watched the show, sensing the imminent battle. Ru hurried to mediate. This is a bit complicated. Let's talk about it later and eat first. Eat your damn food. One woman in her thirties picked up a plate and threw it at Ru. You bastard. I fed you and took care of you. And this is how you repay me. The woman beside her wasn't one to back down either, throwing her tea at Ru. Scumbag. Both women stormed out, but quickly returned. I had uploaded the video of them cheating to Ryu's social circle. Ru had his own fitness circle, and I had anonymously joined it using a secondary account through Emi, since all the money was spent and his mistresses were present. What better time to stir things up? When the women returned, they immediately started fighting with Ru scratching his face until it looked like a mess seeing her lover being attacked emi tried to intervene but the two women turned their attention to her one grabbed emi's hair while the other slapped her repeatedly their coordination was impressive just moments ago they were enemies you filthy slut seducing your cousin into bed you worthless whore 
How can you commit incest? Are you your mom and your uncle's illegitimate daughter? The scene turned chaotic, with plates and bowls shatter everywhere, even attracting the attention of the staff outside. The wait staff yelled for them to stop. I couldn't sit idle by any longer. I seized the moment, stepping in to protect Demi. I pushed her back a bit to create some distance, reading my arm. You got cheated on and you're still protecting her. The woman nearly shoved the video in my face. I'm not a great actor, so I yelled. Bastard. I turned around and swung my arm, slapping Emmy's scratched face hard. Honestly, that slap left Emmy dizzy, making her collapse into a chair. But I wasn't done. I immediately grabbed a wide model and smashed it over Ryu's head. The bottle shattered. Andrew clutched his head, crying out. Tears and snot streaming down his face. Blood flowed through his fingers. You two scumbags. Cousins committing incest. Honey, let me explain. I slapped Timmy again, pointing at her. I said, Divorce. Damn it. Then I kicked her to the ground and walked out of the hotel, stepping over him. Once outside the hotel, I waved my arms and danced. Damn. That felt good. Once I got home, I didn't rest. I quickly edited the video of the affair, posing as a third party, and uploaded it online. Title. Shocking. Cousins from City are caught in bed together. As soon as the video was uploaded, major bloggers rushed to repost it. Some even begged for the uncensored original video. The main thing was to keep the hype high. The gossip didn't make it to the trending list but quickly spread across various short video platforms. Many people recognized Amy Andrew. Among them were a few of my friends who immediately called to ask what was going on. I told them I had no idea and that I had already decided to divorce Amy. Emmy's parents even came to see me that very night. The elderly couple, with terror streaming down their faces, almost knelt before me, trying to atone for their daughter's sins. These two weren't easy to deal with. They had demanded 500,000 as a dowry, and I rarely visited them throughout the year because they never treated me well. Now they were kneeling, begging for my forgiveness. I simply sneered. Uncle, auntie, Emmy's infidelity means she should leave the marriage with nothing. You should prepare to return that 500,000 dowry to me as soon as possible. The old couple were stunned and at a loss. At that moment, Emmy returned. Only to face a double assault. Her parents hit and cursed her. Calling her a disgraceful, shameless harlot. They even demanded to know which cousin she was with. As they had no idea, after a night of continuous beatings, Emmy's mental state collapsed. She pushed her parents away in a frenzy. I love cheating. I love Rue. Rue is not some cousin. He's my lover. Are you satisfied now? Misfortune has befallen our family. Emmy's parents looked like they wanted to die. But Emmy remained indifferent. Her eyes cold as she looked at me. I deceived you. Let's get a divorce. Of course we're getting divorced. I acted even colder than her. But then I added. Return the 500,000 dowry I paid when I married you. Without missing a cent. I don't have money right now. But I'll return it when I do. Sign the agreement first. Emi had prepared well. She had already drafted the divorce agreement. I glanced over it. Emi was to leave with nothing. And the 500,000 dowry would be returned later. No problem. So I signed it. Then Nimi abandoned her parents and left alone. It puzzled me. Those were her parents, not mine. I promptly kicked them out too. Finally, some peace at home. Emi Andrew, in their foolishness, decided to officially open the gym during such a high-profile scandal. As expected, netizens quickly dug up the affair and organized a boycott. Their painstakingly assembled gym faced a disastrous opening. The scandal was so severe that the landlord preferred to pay a $50,000 penalty to break the lease with them. Emi Andrew even begged the landlord, but he remained unmoved. In the end, less than a month and a half after opening, the gym failed. No one wanted to buy their used equipment, finding it disgusting and tainted. They were left with a $400,000 debt. Oh, and my $500,000 dairy, of course, before the repayment date. Emi didn't contact me. After defaulting, she was warned by my friend and urgently called me. Ken, did you tamper with the contract? No. What contract are you talking about? 
Stop pretending. The loan contract. You were the guarantor. Why is your name not on it now? Emi. Don't falsely accuse me. When was I ever a guarantor? Emi was stunned on the other end of the phone. Ken, you tricked me. Did you plan all this to deceive me? I don't know what you're talking about. Goodbye. I hung up mercilessly. Immediately. I sold my house and moved away. I didn't want this crazy woman bothering me. One bite from her and I'd be in trouble. But I didn't give up on the 500,000 dowry. I took her to court. Given we had lived together for years. The court awarded me 300, 500,000. I was satisfied with that. It was better than nothing. But the problem was, Emi couldn't pay. They still had the huge loan to repay. I'm a kind person and can't bear to see others suffer. So, I bought her parents' house for 300, 500,000. Emi sent her parents to a cheap nursing home. Not long after, I heard that Emmy's mom hanged herself, unable to bear the humiliation. Even elderly people nowadays use the internet. Some old men in their 70s and 80s gossip too. Emmy's mother couldn't endure the constant teasing about her daughter's scandal. Then, her father, driven by grief over his wife's suicide, drowned the gossiper in a toilet. Now, he faces life in prison. Emi became an orphan. However, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was the loan. The interest compounded, making it impossible to pay off without significant means. I heard that Emi turned to the sex industry to try and fill the financial hole, but half a month later, she was found dead in the street. The police quickly identified Rue as the prime suspect through their investigation. Rue was arrested, and as Emi's ex-husband, I cooperated with the investigation. In the detention center, I saw Rue, the once vibrant, muscular young man was now emaciated. I offered him a cigarette and asked what happened. He said he became a male escort to make money, but he was victimized and got addicted to drugs. Under the dual pressures, he gave up on life, but before dying, he felt that Emi was to blame for everything and wanted to take her down with him. So, that's what led to the events that followed. After hearing this, I found it incredibly satisfying. I gave Rue a big thumbs up. Well done. A man should always seek revenge. Just like me.